G'day guys, Matt here from Not In The Manual. Today I'm going to do the longest trip that I've ever done before in this car in one hit. And it's going from my place here in the north side of Sydney up to the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Now, my wife and three daughters are going to fly up tomorrow and I'm going to pick them up from the Sunshine Coast Airport at a place called Maruchidor. And today I'm leaving a bit later than I thought, but I may end up not doing it in one hit and, and staying overnight, but I'm just going to see how the day goes and traffic, roadworks and, and everything there and just, just basically just wing it today and see. And having a Tesla, that's much easier to wing things. So I've got my car all packed. I'll just show you through here. So I've got my bike on the roof, which is going to create some drag. So we'll need to just have a look at the consumption today see how it's going just monitor that now it's you can see here it is a beautiful day uh, cars all nice and shiny clean I put the aero wheel caps on here just to try and offset some of the drag from the bike and the car is packed like a game of Tetris in the boot and we've got a few clothes and things we're actually going to Queensland for a wedding so uh, we've got a few uh, suits and things in the back but yeah let's just have a quick look at the trip planning So here in the car, what we're going to do is have a look at a couple of different methods here and just see the predictions for both. I, I think a better roof planner here is the best method, but we're going to plug it into the car. The car isn't going to allow for things like extra weight or the bike on the roof, uh, but I can alter a better route planner to allow for that. Now, <clears throat> the start of the trip super easy. <clears throat> I'm not going to worry about too much I'm just going to let a better route planner do its thing it's connected to my car so it's going to grab efficiency data from the car and we'll see how that function works for me today I've got uh, scan my Tesla running here so we can monitor what's going on with the car and the battery during the trip and get a get a snapshot of what's going on I've got my sexy buttons here so if I go to a non Tesla supercharger I can precondition my battery uh, and yeah, I've got that, that all set up there. So yeah, let's just have a quick look. So if we go to Sunshine Coast Airport, plug that in. So first stop will be Heatherbrae Supercharger, then Port Macquarie. That'll be a quick top up at Heatherbrae. It's saying 25 minutes, but I don't think I'll be staying there for 25 minutes. And let's just go back here to have a look at the trip again. So yeah, it's saying 25 minutes for Heatherbrae and then an hour and five at Port Macquarie. I charged from 18% to 100% at Port Macquarie recently and it only took 25 minutes. So an hour and five. So you can see here, I really don't think this is being super accurate here today unless it's seeing something in the background and factoring something in that I'm not seeing. But yeah, look, let's just play it by ear. We're going to get to Heatherbrae with plenty of, of charge left you can see they're 49 percent i've started off i was 100 percent from home but i've just driven to this park to do this video so 97 percent i really didn't even need to be at 100 percent i'll still get pretty good charging speed at heatherbrae i'd say i'll still get about 120 kilowatts so that supercharger is a v2 so pretty much all of these charges I'm going to today are going to be V2. I'm going to try and find some, if we just zoom out. So you can see here, Sydney's here. And where are we? We'll zoom out to give you a bit more of an idea. So we're here in Australia, Sydney, and then I'm going north up across the New South Wales, Queensland border. And I will be going up through the Gold Coast, through Brisbane, and then just north of Brisbane is this beautiful place called the Sunshine Coast. And I'm going to pick the, the family up there tomorrow. And then we're going to be heading out in the middle of nowhere out here in the countryside somewhere. So not much charging infrastructure out there. So, but that'll be interesting. Uh, we should be able to just charge at our accommodation anyway. So yeah, you can see here, up in this region here, there's a couple of V3 superchargers. So we may... I'll do a bit of research as we go along and I may just change where I'm charging and how much I charge to try and take advantage of one of those V3 superchargers. But today isn't all about speed, it's just taking it easy. I've got a fully packed car, 
So I really just want to have a look and monitor my efficiency. And that's where this first leg to this Heather Bray supercharger will give me, give me an idea of what the consumption is going to be like on the rest of the trip. So, all right, it's a good mixture here today of, of, of terrain. We've got some ups and downs. Uh, it's not going to be a flat drive. So it'll be interesting and we'll see. So we'll you also use the energy app to monitor the drive as we go along. And I like to have it on the last 50 kilometers on a long trip and it gives you a good average of how you're going. So I think that's, that's what we're going to look at. This is going to stay on percentage up here. I, I'm not, not too fussed about that range. It's sitting just above 400 kilometers at the moment. So we will reset the trip. We're on zero. That's my Sunshine Coast trip meter. So we will just now have a look at a better route planner. So I have put the same destination into a better route planner and we will get it to calculate. And as I said, it's talking to my car and grabbing the efficiency data. Okay, so it's saying the trip is going to take 10 hours and five minutes plus charging, one hour and 24, five charges. So you can already see at this first charger, it's telling me Heather Bray 13 minutes, and then it's telling me 16 minutes at Port Macquarie, as opposed to the car telling me an hour and five. So you can already see it, this is much more accurate. Then we're going to stop at Coffs Harbour, then Knockrail, and then Rochdale, and then to Sunshine Coast. So we're just going to see how this all adapts over the day. I'm going to leave it here, uh, so it's saying Heather Bray arrival with 55%, and we'll just we'll just see. So I can go back to here in this setting. It's connected to my car. It's telling me my consumption is going to be 138 watt hours per kilometer, but I think it's going to be more like uh, 160 with the bike on the roof. Uh, I think it's going to sort of average around that 160 mark. And then plus I'm carrying a boot full of weight uh, bags uh, stuffed in there. So we've got some extra weight here. So I could even get up to about 170 watt hours per kilometer. So I've got the ability of, in a better route planner to, to change that. And I really wanna see how that adapts to the cars driving anyway today and see how quickly that adapts. If it doesn't adapt fast enough, I will change that manually myself and then it will start factoring that extra consumption in during the drive. So yeah, well, we can, we can get both going and, and see how it looks, but just for fun, let's go into the Tesla app and see what the route planning does there. So navigate to Sunshine. Okay, it's telling me very similar to the car. It's a little bit different. Um, the, the charging times are a little bit different. You can see the arrival time to the Heather Bray supercharger. It's telling me I'm going to have 49%. This is saying 54. So you can see it is a different system to the what's in the car which is a little bit disappointing, but anyway, we'll, I would have thought they could have used the, a similar sort of system, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, it's telling me the total trip is going to take 10 hours and 32 minutes plus charging. And it's, it's going to be about a thousand kilometers all up the trip. So if we go back to a better route planner, look at the total trip, 1,012 kilometers. So Really, it's a thousand kilometer challenge, <laughs> but we're not going to be doing it as fast as Beyond Tesla does. So uh, Tesla Beyond. So we'll 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 see. We're just going to take our time. We might just charge a little bit extra. I'm not going to be sort of hitting each supercharger. We don't have the luxury of as many superchargers to choose from as they do in Norway anyway in other countries. So this will be just drive and just reassess at each supercharging stop. So yeah, guys, uh, enjoy the scenery and I'll pick back up at the Heather Bray Supercharger. Okay, so you may have seen uh, when we first started navigating, the car has already started preconditioning. So even though we're an hour and a half away, I think it likes to just get the battery to a 
you know, up to about 30 degrees. So I guess it's help, helping it there and then it'll gradually warm that battery up to 40 degrees as we approach the supercharger. So the battery is sitting at 24.3 degrees. The ambient temperature is 11 degrees. So it's probably factoring that in as well. I don't know what sort of background calculations the car does, but it's, it's doing its thing. So I'll just trust the car to do what it needs to do today. And yeah, you can see it's, it's not really doing too hard, not really pushing it too hard. It's letting that rear stator heat up and the battery inlet's sitting on 32.8. Not too bad. Uh, I think it's just a bit of a gentle preconditioning here as we start the, you know, as, as we start the freeway trip. It's actually indicating to do a lane change here to follow the route, but <laughs> there's nothing coming up at all. So it's going to get pretty annoying. So I probably will just turn it off. So to turn off, navigate on autopilot. You can either disable it totally from coming on automatically, but you can just toggle it here. So if we disable that here, now we're back to just standard autopilot. And that's, that's works fine for me. I'm here in the energy app and I'm in the consumption tab, which is really the only one I use. And I've got it set on 50, 50 kilometers and to look at the average consumption for the last 50 kilometers. So we're well inside the freeway trip here. Uh, we've done 69 kilometers. So we're sitting at 156 watt hours per kilometer. So with a boot full of heavy luggage uh, and a bike on the roof dra creating drag, uh, I, I think that's pretty good consumption. This consumption here is purely just on the freeway at 110 kilometers an hour. Autopilot's pretty much been doing all the driving. I haven't had to put my foot down to overtake or anything there. So I'm pretty impressed with where that consumption's at for the last 50. Oh, just one more thing. Just to show you why you shouldn't use the range up here. It's saying 289 kilometers to go when really it's 237. So that is not based on your driving consumption, your current driving consumption. That is based on a fixed consumption calculation. So don't be using that on trips. Just leave it on percentage and use the energy app. So the navigation, it constantly adjusts as well as you go along. And I, I don't think it's as good as a better route planner, but it's telling me I'm going to arrive with 47%. A better route planner is saying I'm going to arrive with 50%. One of the good things about a better route planner is it gives you live charger status. So how many stalls are free? You do have that within the, the, the Tesla navigation, but it's not as straightforward as this. I can just have that displayed all the time. We're here at the Heatherbrae Supercharger. So you can see here, uh, plenty of stalls available. So there's only one uh, other Model 3 down there. So you can see we're here, it's saying 25 minutes charge time to continue the trip. I don't think it's gonna take that long at all. And you can see here, it's saying the Port Macquarie Supercharger, we would arrive there with minus 16%. There's no way I could make it to the Port Macquarie Supercharger. That's why I need to just do a little top up here and then I'll do a longer charge there. So I'll aim to get there with 20% and a warm battery and I'll charge pretty quick there as well. And it's a pretty scenic charge spot. Here we, here we are, uh, a better route planner will show us some charge information. Scan my Tesla, battery's nice and hot, almost 42 degrees. So we should get pretty good charging speed. So let's go plug in and see what happens. We should get, oh, hopefully over a hundred kilowatts. There we go. Maximum charging speed for this supercharger. Well, I think it's 130 kilowatts max. So you can see here, it's saying 128 kilowatts from the charger. So we're getting the full, full charger kilowatts, but 
you can see here we're not getting that's what's going into the battery 120 kilowatts so the other power would be just going somewhere else you can see the battery inlet 44.3 so it's still trying to to heat the battery up the rear state is at 51 degrees so that's acting as a bit of a battery heater there at the moment but not powering up you can see the rear motor isn't powered up at all so still getting pretty good charging speed I, I honestly don't think I'm going to be here that long we might charge up to that point let's have a look here so at the moment we'd get to the Port Macquarie supercharger with minus 11 percent and we can watch that change as we're charging so if you wanted to if you've got an aim of what you want to get to the next supercharger with you can just look at the navigation here so that's a 10 percent now and that will go down so if we want to arrive there with 10 percent well we wait till it gets to plus 10 percent and we'll be good but yeah i want to go over into the petrol station there and get a drink and use the bathroom and then we'll come back and i think by about that time we will be ready to go so a better route planner is saying we need 17 minutes and the next leg of this is going to be two and a half hours so we'll um, we'll see we've got 11 hours and 15 minutes left on this trip according to a better route planner and it's pretty accurate so you know we're not going to be breaking any records here but there's no v3 superchargers here in this first part of the trip Wow, okay, I only had enough time to go in and get a coffee and come back. So it's been about 15 minutes and I'm at 93%. So time to unplug and get going. So you'll see here now on the trip, we scroll down, Port Macquarie, 26%, 27% I'll get there with. So it's going to be a little bit less than that because I've got the bike on the roof and my consumption's a little bit higher. Okay, you'll see here, a better route planner is saying I'm going to arrive with 20% so it's factoring in some slightly higher consumption I'll just double check that you can see here it's adjusted my reference consumption now to 149 kilowatt hours per 100 for this for 110 kilometers an hour so it's automatically adjusting all that for me and we'll get back into the trip let's go Okay, I don't know if you saw that there, but the car did do a little jerk into that jerk of the steering wheel into that thing. So it is still doing it, but not consistent. I just had a section of road where it came along with no warning at all. There, it came round a bend and there was just no line markings on the road at all just plain black tarmac no edge markings or anything just a little seam of tarmac in the middle and the car just autopilot still just it was wobbly but it actually held the car through the corner i was so impressed and i didn't even have to take over i just thought i'd see what the car would do and it was scary initially but then i realized the car could work out where the middle of the road was without the lines it could see the edges super impressive okay guys we just got to the port macquarie supercharger and it's at a really nice winery here so we arrived with 20 percent charge so a little bit less than what was predicted from uh, the other way, I think I had a little bit of a headwind, but uh, consumption for this leg of the journey was sitting between 150 and 170 watt hours per kilometer. So battery is not super hot, 37.5. Let's go plug in and see what speed we get. Okay, plugged in. Let's see, ramp up. Let's see what we get. So. I don't know, not expecting full power because I'm at 37.5, not over 40. But it could surprise me. Here we go. Oh, look at that. 121 kilowatts. So, 
saying 130 on here again so we've obviously got some uh, energy usage going on elsewhere so what we'll have a look at now we will just let it charge I'm not sure I've got if we look out at the trip it's saying I can get all the way up to this McLean supercharger I'm not convinced based on my consumption and a better route planner is telling me to go to the Coffs Harbour supercharger as well but yeah let's just let it charge for a little while and see where it's at I'm going to go in and use the bathroom and get a coffee and maybe a bite to eat and then I'd say it will be time to go okay so by the time I went in and got some food and a coffee and went to the bathroom I've come back and it's at 90 percent so that was 20 something minutes of charging I'll grab all the data from Teslafy later and overlay that on the video so the car is telling me one thing it's saying go to the McLean supercharger uh, it's only you know I'm at 90 percent and it's saying to, I'm, I'm going to get there with three percent I'm, I'm not happy I'm not comfortable with that margin so what I'm going to do you can see here McLean is all the way up here past Grafton but we've got a Coffs Harbour supercharger here in between so I'm going to go there instead on a better route planner you can see here I click on the next charging stop that it's planning and that is Coffs Harbour uh, I'm not sure I think that's in a shopping center so I'm not sure if I'm going to get in there with the bike but I'm going to see what my state of charge is when I get there and I think it's better to just leapfrog that do a top up there just to just to be safe uh, with the big with the higher consumption I've got today I think that's going to be the best option so yeah and the car's down to 44 kilowatts of charging anyway at 90 percent there's not much point staying past you know 80 90 percent anyway so there is only one other car charging here at the moment so if there had have been more cars charging here in the bays are all full obviously i just wouldn't have charged past 80 percent and that would have made the decision for me but when there's no other cars here you've got the option of just charging a bit more to give you a bit of headroom or charging that bit extra to maybe skip a supercharging stop so guys we're going to you can see the car is now had a rethink and it's going to let me stop at Coffs Harbour it's getting me to stop there so we can have a look here and look at photos of the supercharger location so you can see it is in a shopping center so I'm going to need to be careful there isn't some sort of height restriction getting in there with the bike on the roof and hopefully I don't forget because that would be pretty <laughs> pretty tragic anyway guys I'll catch up with you at that supercharger okay just arrived at the Coffs Harbour supercharger you can see here I am the only car so good timing so let's go and uh, plug in I, I think it's saying 50 minutes but it's not going to take 50 minutes it doesn't seem to really get this right uh, we have a better route planner let's have a look so it says I need to charge to 89% to get to the Nokro uh, supercharger yeah I think that's uh yeah. i might just charge a little bit more It'd be nice to get there and not have to stop elsewhere uh the car is telling me i need to charge at least 40 percent to get there to be or to be on zero percent there and i'll put some headroom on that so yeah this is going to need to be probably my biggest charging session uh, but i do have an option to to bail out beforehand at mclean i could possibly bail out there and and charge just do a small charge there I'll see how I'm going but we might just go to 85 percent roughly and see how it goes so that shouldn't take too long so I'll just go plug in and see what speed we get okay it's just doing the handshake just heard the DC fast charging contactors come in 
and we've started charging so here we go let's watch this go up battery is nearly at 40 degrees so we should get the full 120 no oh here we go yep it's just hesitating there at 90 there we go 120 kilowatts that's what we want to see so telling me 30 minutes let's just see how it goes so 308 so I might just go and use the bathroom and uh, get a quick drink I think I'm almost getting ready to go I don't want to uh, wait here any longer let's just have a look this is quite a good location I went in here at Coffs Harbour I went into the shops there there's bathroom I got a coffee pretty late in the day but there was a cafe still open uh, after hours I think there's a petrol station over there where you could go and get some food and snacks but let's have a look here so I've got a decision to make I think what I'm going to do there is a supercharger at McLean I might end up just going there because yeah, my charging rate has slowed down to 50 kilowatts and it's saying 10 more minutes but in 10 minutes I can be out of here and probably beat some of the traffic out of here that's the only problem here with Coffs Harbour is it's it's a high traffic area you're not really bypassing this town so you can make that decision from looking at this screen I can see the Nocro charger it's saying I'll arrive there with 9% I know I'm not going to make it there with the current state of charge so I mean a better route plan is telling me I've got enough so what I'm going to do is just get on the road uh, it gives you you know little little party streamers or whatever saying it's time to go so I think I'm going to stop charging here I'm at 89 percent a few more cars are starting to come in here anyway but still still pretty light on as far as uh, the charges go but yeah I'm going to stop charging and just get on the road